Okay, now that we've done the shopping, it's time to get ready for the build. This is a simple, easy list. Um, all parts are compatible. However, if you wanted to be adventurous and find um, a cheaper option, there are definitely ways you could save money. For example, uh, finding your grey markets, you could definitely find a server with the X99 compatibility that would be compatible with your E526 series. That's both V3, V4. You would normally buy these in a already server that somebody's just getting rid of, and this would most likely come with a power supply, even some RAM, and it's not that hard to upgrade from there. So you could definitely save some money. Um, but with all that said, all the parts here are compatible. Let's get ready to build. Uninstalling CPU cover. First, this one. Loosen that off. Then that one. I'm gonna have plenty of clearance there. Lift without damaging any of the pins. Beautiful. We'll be back with a CPU. CPU we're using E5 2637 version 4. Install it on the motherboard triangle, match it with the CPU triangle. Right there. Line up with the notches. Triangle, triangle, triangle. Little wiggle. Beautiful. Just as simple as reversing what we did with the insulation. This lever first. And the final lock, two lock. Fantastic. Once well, CPUs is installed, nice. Now the difference between this motherboard and say this motherboard as well is also noting that this actually has uh, four channels of RAM per CPU, where this one only has two channels of RAM per CPU, although two of the modules do share a channel. So you got two per CPU per CPU and we've got an individual RAM slot. This is the Xeon so it does have a four channel each. Now applying to thermal, thermal paste. Bit of the Arctic Silver. Not the best stuff but this these CPUs really do not have any a very low temperature so you don't actually need the best paste. It's good reliable. And what I like to do is uh, create a little spatula and just spread the paste. Mm -hmm. There we go, nice even coverage, more or less. I'm just gonna use a basic cooler. No, oh, wow, it is a basic cooler. It's one of the cheap ones that I got somewhere. Thought I had a cooler master one. Anyway, whatever. I like to just give it a little squeezy squeeze. Yeah, good enough. Once it's tightened, it will want to spread to wherever it needs to go. And just screwdriver, drive it in, just till it stops moving. No need to apply any huge amount of torque. Both coolers on. Nice, really tight tolerance there. I think I was supposed to fix, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Now for the fans, the fans are interesting. I'm using, oh yeah, nice. Delta. These fans are supposed to spin at 3,500 RPM. Uh, I've only ever seen them clocked at 3,000 RPM, so. But keep in mind, this is 0.6 of an amp as well. And I think these headers that I'm using are only rated for one amp. And I'm not sure if that's divided by two or whatever. And I plan on using a total of four fans. But anyway, it's worked in the past. I've never had any problems. And uh, these fans I got from AliExpress. They're about two, three dollars Australian. And I normally buy about 10 of them at a time. They're end of life, but still really good. Ah, and also to strap these fans in, now because the cooler wasn't actually designed for the current setup that I'm having, and normally they come with a wire thing, but that doesn't matter because zip ties will take care of that. Got to remember, 
Whenever building systems like these, there's one rule to follow. The money is always right. Look at that. Air comes in here, blows out from there. Obviously, I'll trim that back. But booyah, that's how you keep your Xeons cool. Now, these Xeons aren't nothing exciting. They're only four core each, but yeah. I know, they were cheap, I guess. Handy tip for putting a motherboard in a computer case that doesn't really belong. Motherboard standoff. Screw. Couple of moments left. And we're back. As you can see, standoff. Plenty of space, no shorting out. Beautiful. And it costs pretty much free. Peace. One thing I will note is that the PCIe here goes to the chipset. That means they're only running at two gen. So even though the four lanes wide, only two gen. Now to solve this problem, just got a bit of an extender which goes to the PCI slot. This has been tested and yes, you do get your gen three speed to go with my Samsung drive. Which is 970 plus Evo. So we just grab this, the motherboard, CPU, grab it by the heatsink, no problem. It's gonna go in this case. Ooh. Oh dear. Oh dear, looks like it's not gonna be fit. Oh well, we'll be back. So it appears that the hard drive tray is in the way. Such a shame. Nothing that a little drill can't fix. Oh yeah. There we go, after a little bit of arts and craft, mission accomplished. Yeah, beauty. Alrighty, just a recap. RAM, 64 gigs of RAM, running two channels per CPU. Uh, memory speed, 2133, very standard. Um, it is ECC memory. The processors, we've got a dual E5 2637B3. Now for the choice of the graphics card, which one to put in? I've got a choice between AMD, NVIDIA, 3090, 6900 XT. Now in case you're wondering which one I've decided to go to, that's right, AMD. Introducing the 550, RX 550 Radeon. Awesome. Special unboxing. Wow, would you look at that? Most uninspiring card, especially when you consider the first two, but I couldn't help resist showing it. Four gigs of RAM, VRAM, and that's what's gonna go in the system. We got one CPU that's official to the power supply, and the other one, well, at the sort of make Marion connection. Brought a couple of these off eBay, just a simple graphics card to CPU. Fortunately, these CPUs only have a power rating wall. Officially, it's 130 watts, but I've only ever seen it at 80, and that was under an AVX instruction, so, yeah. Look at that. Check that that's on. And time to start it. There we go, as you can see, no problems. Well, anyway, that concludes the build part of this video. This is a quick um, user benchmarks performance just to give you an idea. I don't know how serious people take this particular benchmark, but as you can see, the PC performs actually quite well. It was definitely the graphics card that um, let the system down. Going forward, I'll definitely do a comparison with an actual good graphics card just to see um, how well it performs in benchmarks and whatnot. But as for now, we'll use the RX 50. 500. And if you like this video, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. We'll be doing some gaming installs and benchmarks for the next video. Thank you very much. Peace. Oh, Xeon's come in 40 PCIe lanes.